you know, they're raising, uh, raising the hunt level by three foot. Well, it remains the same. The normal pool remains the same. The spillway crest will remain the same. It's just that non-overflow portion that we're raising in order to keep flood flows from spilling over the edge. So the normal pool stays as it is. All right. Well, what the, uh, I, I'm kind of confused about the, the number 2.2 million. Maybe we start talking about nearly 4 million. What it seems to be the... Yeah, there, there were a, a few contributors to that. Uh, I would say most, most significantly, as we got deeper into the design, we, we discovered that there's really difficult access to this site. And we needed to incorporate more improvements to the roadway and more, more um, of a construction, a temporary construction laydown area on the sides. The access is going to really depend on, on waterborne traffic across the reservoir rather than cutting a whole new road. When they built the dam originally, it had been done with a road that went um, downstream of the treatment plant, across the creek, and back up that left bank. But that, even to redo that, would have pretty significant environmental impact and uh, doesn't really serve all of the areas that we need to be working, like up on the higher area of, the, of that left abutment. So what we started looking at, well, how else can we get there? We looked at access around the upper end, maybe coming down somehow to, to a, a launching area for barges or something from, from the upper end of the reservoir. That wasn't going to pan out from an environmental standpoint. So we're basically looking at developing construction access on that right abutment and, and putting some um, watercraft in barges, basically, in to be able to work back and forth on the back side of the dam. So that's, that's part of it. A um, little bit of escalation just in terms of, of uh, time, because years are going by here, so that was an earlier, an extra year onto the um, escalation. And, and just refining the unit prices and refining more of the design details, things just wound up ratcheting up more. Quite a bit of ratcheting. <laughs> I, uh, I, <laughs> I was surprised at it when we when we got to that number. Well, I was say I'm a little bit shocking for me personally. And and one of the things that we thought we were economizing by narrowing that concrete on the crest. Remember, I said that we went from 12 feet back to four, uh, took the four feet overbuild back off. So we're going back to an eight foot. That that reduces the amount of concrete that we're doing, but it also increases the amount of that downstream face that would be left to be resurfaced. And right now we're budgeting for that entire face on the left side to be resurfaced. And realistically, that probably does not all need to be done. So we have the contract structured right now so that there's basically an optional amount that, that we could not do. We could, the budget includes an entire refacing, but when we get up there and have, have cleaner access to the entire surface and can begin uh, pecking away at it, the typical process is to determine mutually between the contractor and the engineer and the owner, here's how much we think really requires repair. We originally had estimated that particular task at a fairly low unit price per square foot. While we were doing the final design, we have that basically that same detail on a couple of other projects. One of my other jobs uh, for, for the DCR, it's one of the state park dams where we did that work and another project out in Ohio. And the bids came in much higher than we had been seeing previously. So while we expanded that area of, of work, the, both the area went up and the unit price went way up. And that's one of the reasons we're looking at it much more critically now, saying, well, maybe we can get by without some of that's more cosmetic. We want to we replace the portions that are really decaying. We don't want to go overboard with it. Well, then there is a possibility that it could come in somewhat, somewhat lower in price than that three point whatever. Yeah. And there four million there. Mm-hmm. Okay. How did all this get started? And uh, what engineer come to the conclusion that this dam might break? I mean, what was that? Was the well, there's been ongoing studies even from before we were involved. We have uh, records in, in your town records, memos going back to ECR, internal correspondence, where their engineers also come out and do inspections. It's been getting scrutiny for, for some time. In fact, when we 
we had a conference with your dam safety, the regional dam safety engineer from DCR who grants the alteration permit, who has to issue the, the conditional operation certificates. Um, he made the comment to us a couple of years ago saying, this, is, this dam is in his top 10 list and has been rising on that list as he's getting other dams fixed up around the state. He wanted to see progress on this dam. So, you know, this is not just coming from us. This is, this is your state regulator well, who's well, well, putting the pressure. Is, what, what engineer fails to put it under consent? Drake Bernay, Janet, the state, or who? Well, it's, it's the state who has to issue the permits. It's the state who issues the, can, the operation certificate. Well, I, I tell you, I came on council in 2004. That program, that's when WW had the thing. And they, there was a big discussion at that time about the need for the work. About some of the cracks in the dam needed to be grouted or whatever they were talking about doing. And then they got into talking about putting in all the new lines and all that stuff from the upper dam. Uh, anyway, it ran up. They were talking figure you know, six million dollars then. And that kind of died on the line. At the time. But that, I mean, it's, it's been bad back and forth. I know that long. I've been on North Council since, that, since 2004. So, been in this battle before. But I, I'm Bobby, is, is my Bobby with us tonight. He could probably have a little expertise as far as some of this is concerned. I mean, he's been up there trying to direct their traffic for the uh, long enough to make the tire turn white. So. <laughs> I don't know about how much expertise I can offer, but as you know, I've been an advocate of improvements to both of our restaurants for a number of years, probably going back to the early 90s. Uh, and as I see it at this point in time, there are really three overriding factors. Number one being potential for lost life. Uh, if, no matter what our opinions might be, or what study might be made, one single life would be too many. Uh, the second thing would be the state has mandated this. Uh, no one here is responsible for that, uh, other than the regulations that we have to adhere to. If we ignored those, then we would almost immediately begin paying fines, which ultimately would not go towards the uh, final price of the project, which we eventually would have to complete anyway. And finally, from an operator standpoint, we need the redundancy that the large reservoir offers. Uh, twice in my career, the small reservoir has been overwhelmed by high water events. And if not for the lower reservoir, the lower reservoir, uh, over 8,000 people would have been without water for an indeterminate amount of time. So, I mean, that's what we're facing. Obviously, no one here wants to spend $4 million. Uh, I've lived here all my life. I plan on living the rest of my life here. And I wish I had an alternative. But uh, I don't. And uh, the infrastructure, as you know, Paul, has been in work for a long, long time. And I guess that's finally caught up with us on that. Thank you, Bobby. I'd like to say, I, I think you.